Elsewhere is the home of the cunning Khajiit, dusty savannas and lush forests. However, the history of this mysterious land is shrouded in mystery, and its lore is filled with events equally as fascinating as they are bizarre. So let's dive deep into the lore of Elsewhere. Elsewhere is a southern province of Tamriel, which borders both the Bosma homeland of Valenwood to the west and the imperial province of Cyrodiil to the north and east. The nation is divided into two major climates. In the north, you will find the region known as Anaquina, which contains savannas, badlands and dry plains. While the southern region is known as Pelotine and is formed from fertile forests and plantations. In both regions, the most prominent people are the Khajiit, a cat-like race known for their high intelligence and agility. However, those born in the harsh northern lands are more likely to become hardened warriors and live in nomadic tribes, while those born in the south often lead much gentler and affluent lifestyles. As a result, the northerners see those from the south as decadent, soft and depraved, while those from the south see their neighbours as barbaric and uncouth. It's also in the southern lands that the notorious moon sugar is produced. This sweet substance is seen as holy by the catfolk, and is consumed by them on nearly a daily basis, leading to them having a very sweet tooth, and candies, puddings and cakes becoming a major part of their diet. As a race, the Khajiit have a natural tolerance for moon sugar. However, when taken by those of other races, it can be very dangerous, and everyone runs the risk of addiction by using it, particularly when mixed with nightshade to create the drug Skooma. One of the most interesting things about the Khajiit is that their appearance and entire physiology are tied to the position of the moons when they are born, and they can differ dramatically. It's the largest of the two moons, Massa, which has the most influence over their physical form. So for example, when it's waning, Khajiit are born as small quadrupods, often resembling simple house cats, while those born in a full moon are much larger but still move on four legs, making them effectively giant cats that can be ridden as steeds into battle. The most common type of Khajiit that we've seen are those born when Massa is waxing, but there are also some that are almost indistinguishable from wood elves that are born when the moon is new. There are many variations of each of these forms, depending on the interplay between the two moons. However, the Khajiit also know of a third moon, and when that is in alignment with the other two, a main is born. The main is the spiritual leader of the Khajiit, and it is said that only one can be alive at any one time. This is because the Khajiit believe there has only ever been one main, who is simply reborn into a new body after death. The Khajiit are one of the oldest races to have inhabited Tamriel, who along with other beast races like the Argonians, lived here long before the arrival of elves and men. There are mixed reports on how they came to settle in the region now known as Elsewhere, with their creation myth suggesting they were given the lands by one of their gods, while other records suggest that the ancient Khajiit had actually settled across the heartlands, but were forced south as men and elves claimed the more northern lands for themselves. However, whatever the case, the Khajiit eventually came to call this part of Tamriel home. By the beginning of the first era, the land now known as Elsewhere was split between many tribal factions, and although some early historical documents claim that the tribes existed in a constant state of war, this seems to have been corrected, as more recent reports suggest that they existed peacefully with one another, with each group specialising in a particular type of good or service which could be traded with the others. This peace lasted for thousands of years, and as a result, other nations posed little threat to the Khajiit, and chose not to extend their borders into the Catfolk's kingdoms. However, this all ended when a terrible plague decimated the Khajiit, forcing the survivors into roles they didn't choose, and upsetting the balance of their society. In the end, the small kingdoms collapsed, and two larger ones rose in their place, Pelotine in the south, and Anaquina in the north. The two kingdoms were vastly different in their way of life, and it didn't take long for them to enter into a war that would last for centuries, with neither side making any real progress against the other. Then towards the end of the first era, the empire from Cyrodiil conquered the two kingdoms, but even this did not bring an end to their fighting. Eventually, in the year 309 of the second era, the Khajiit established a central government, and combined their holdings into one kingdom, which they named after an old Khajiit proverb that says, the perfect society is always elsewhere. 
Elsewhere was now a single country, however the old rivalries between the North and South remained, and many local leaders of the two regions felt betrayed by this new alliance, and chose to rise up against the United State. Eventually a ceasefire was established when the Maine, the non-partisan spiritual leader of the Khajiit, stepped in to broker a deal. With the two sides now at peace, the warring factions established terms whereby control of elsewhere shifted between them according to the phases of the moons. However the truth was that both sides had very limited power, and the true leadership came from the main. This peace continued under many more mains, however a couple hundred years later a flu virus emerged that once again decimated the Kashyyyk population, but when all hope was almost lost, unexpected help arrived from the Ultima in the Somerset Isles. The High Elves brought healers, physicians and supplies and were able to save the remaining Khajiit, and then a few years later they repaid the favour by joining the Elves in their Aldmeri Dominion. This provided the Khajiit with some added protection against the Empire from the north, however towards the end of the Second Era some regions of elsewhere were attacked and seized by Tiber Septim's Empire, and it was in one of these that he constructed the Numidium, a colossal humanoid golem that was said to have been around a thousand feet tall. However, interestingly, the native Khajiit recorded that a dragon break occurred during its assembly. A dragon break is a temporal phenomenon that involves the splitting of the natural timeline into branching parallel realities. At the end of the break, the timeline reconnects, making all the possibilities and outcomes truth, although also contradictory to one another. These events are utterly incomprehensible to the people affected, and in this case also massively impacted the surrounding land, spreading a substance called poisoned glow rock across the area, and causing health issues for those nearby for generations. Using the Numidium, Tiber Septim was able to conquer all of Tamriel, and once again turn elsewhere into one of the Empire's provinces. Almost four centuries would pass where there is almost no mention of elsewhere in surviving literature, but we know that during this time the Khajiit's loathing of the Empire grew as they continued to suffer the after effects of the Numidium's creation. However, towards the end of the 4th century, elsewhere re-enters the history books in the Five Year War between the Khajiit and the Bosma of Valenwood. The war began when the Khajiit were attacked by Bosma forces who invaded one of their towns and killed thousands of civilians. The Khajiit claim that it was an attack without provocation, while the Bosma claim that the catfolk had been raiding their trade caravans. The two sides fought many battles over the five years, and although the Bosma had some early victories, the Khajiit were eventually able to push them back, claiming more territory for elsewhere, as well as victory in the war. Following the end of the Oblivion Crisis, the fourth era began, and elsewhere found itself once again independent from the Empire. However, this brought them very little peace. Early in the era, their main was assassinated, causing chaos in the region, and then around 50 years later, both of the moons vanished for two years in an event known as the Void Knights. Given the incredible significance of the moons to the Khajiit, this caused a lot of panic and unrest. However, eventually they returned, and the new Aldmeri Dominion took credit for bringing them back, claiming to have used previously undiscovered Dawn magics. The Khajiit considered them saviours once again, and 15 years later, following a coup, the Elsewhere Confederacy was dissolved into the ancient states of Anaquina and Pelatine, which in turn became vassal states of the Dominion. That brings us as far as possible in the timeline, up to the events of Skyrim and its DLC, but would you like to explore elsewhere in a future main Elder Scrolls game? What are your favourite pieces of lore from this region? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more lore videos on the other regions of Tamriel. As always, I've been James with Fandom, thank you for watching, and enjoy the game.